My name is Hans van Kippersluis. I'm an associate professor of health economics. I'm from the Netherlands and I currently teach in Bachelor 2, the research project, and I teach in Bachelor 3, impact evaluation. The favorite thing I'm doing when I'm not working is playing football, uh, doing all kinds of sports, but also playing board games or parlor games with friends and seeing a movie, going to the theater, these kind of things. I think there are two best things about my job. Uh, one is the, basically the gratification and the sense of fulfillment I derive from teaching students. And the second thing I like about my job is that you really have a lot of flexibility and you have the opportunity to do a lot of research visits. I mean, I spent a lot of time in, in Los Angeles to, to collaborate with colleagues over there. And I also spent two and a half years in Hong Kong. And these are both professionally, but also personally, these are wonderful experiences. I don't think I had a very clear idea about what I wanted to become as a child. I mean. Some years I thought about becoming a politician, some years I thought about becoming a literature critic, sometimes I thought about opening my own hotel. I didn't have a really clear idea about what I wanted to become. But when I was doing my master thesis, I realized that I enjoyed the research. I enjoyed the thinking part, the data analysis part, the writing down of, of my research ideas. And at the same time, around the same time, one of my professors asked me whether I would be interested in doing a, a PhD. And at first I was doubting, I didn't even really know what it involved doing a PhD. But then I also got in touch with a professor in health economics, Eddie van Dorslaar. And that really made me very excited because he sort of sketched that I could be applying econometrics, applying the things that I had learned during my study on a socially relevant problem, namely health. And this is what made me really excited to start an academic career and do a PhD. My inspiration for doing this type of research uh, mainly started when I was visiting Los Angeles in 2009. This was one of my first research visits and I was staying in Venice Beach. And what I saw there really fascinated me. I mean, if you walk there on the boulevard of Venice Beach, you see people being offered pizza slices for one dollar, very big cans of Coke, and a lot of people there are overweight and from lower socioeconomic groups. And I took my bike and I sort of cycled a few blocks away from there to go to the Whole Foods market, which is an organic, very expensive supermarket. And there you see the complete opposite. There's banners that say, your health starts here. There is people walking there with their own personal trainer, only eating juices and, and vegetables. And this very big contrast, only a few blocks away from each other, that really fascinated me. Why do people, why do some people behave so healthily? Why do other people don't care at all about their health? This really sort of fascinated me and this, how, this, this is how my research in health behavior uh, started. If you live in poverty, if you have debt, if the only thing you can think about is how to send your kids to school or how to pay the bills, then your health is not the first thing you worry about. So I think this sort of simple framework already gives some idea about why certain people behave healthier than others. In my view for health behavior, uh, economic theory is not enough. I mean, just modeling health behavior as a res from, rational, from a rational point of view is not enough. What we need in that context is, I think, the psychological insight of Daniel Kahneman, who's a Nobel laureate, who has the insight of two systems. So, basically, people have system one, which is more like the, the, the doer, as Richard Taylor calls it. He's more focused on the present, more the intuitive system. And on the other hand, there is the system two, as Kahneman calls it, and this is more the deliberative system, the ones who plans ahead, who thinks about the future. And the way that they think about, I think the way we, all, we can also think about health behavior is that it's sort of a constant negotiation between this planner, uh, this planner and the doer in that case. And so that involves self-control. Because if you have to follow your intentions, if you have to follow the ideas of the planner, this actually involves some self-control. So what we are trying to do now is basically extending the economic theory, the rational theory of, of health behavior, by incorporating this idea of two systems, the role of self-control and the role of temptations. And I think this may help to actually understand not just the intentions that people form, but also why their actions sometimes deviate from their intentions. I did another study with a colleague from Hong Kong, in which we observed teenagers in the United States that were sort of initiating smoking. And what we know is that 80% of smokers start before the age of 18. So teenagers is clearly the group that you want to target. It's mostly emotionally unstable pupils, emotionally unstable teenagers who are most susceptible to peer effects. And I think this is pretty interesting because this perhaps opens up some uh, avenues for policy to intervene in the sense that we could try to train emotional stability such that these students are better able to resist peer pressure or better able to resist the pressure of bad role models. But we could perhaps also think about uh, stratifying groups in a different way. As a student, you should realize that you're privileged to study what you want and where you want. So I think you should take this opportunity, take your study seriously, but never take yourself too seriously.